Hello community, so great that you are back. We have a brand new model, a QN3 Next. So here we have it, QN3 Next Generation. It is open source and it is here towards an ultimate training and inference efficiency model. So let's have a look. If you want, here is the technical report, QN Next. Here's about 10,000 words, beautiful. So now we are live, we go here with Next 80 speed. We go here syncing, you see here is yeah full syncing power. We just insert here my logic test and let's go. 82k token, great. Let's have a look here. This is the syncing process. It accelerated at 200% because otherwise it would just get boring. But you see it's trying to understand the instruction. And this is the reasoning process that you see. Now this reasoning goes on for quite some time and after nine minutes I can show you. Now we have the first result gives me here in my predefined template exactly I want to see everything how it's done tells me hey I found a solution it is great I have here a seven press solution which would be great if it would be correct efficient safe optimal no shorter solution exists I was within the energy limits I was within the token limits I was within the code card limits all rules are respected this is great but you know, there is one problem, of course, as always with those tests, the mathematics is not what's in real world. Because look at this, our building only has 50 floors for the elevator. So you see it calculates floor 63 and this is then just capped to 50 and this is an incorrect solution. But you know what? We just have a look what, what they wanted to achieve. Here, the training costs were significantly reduced. And if you look here at a very old benchmark accuracy, you see it went here from 81% to about 84.7%. So better performance, much better here in the acceleration, less training cost. So let's see if this little mixture of expert model and ATB with active 3 billion free trainable parameter can reason, can sync. And here we have artificial analysis, the intelligent index. Here, this is a sum of 10 different evaluations that are known. And here you see it. Okay, QN3 next ATB active 3B is a little bit better than a deep seek, is comparable to a Claude 4 sonnet, but is not as cute as the QN3 235B. Okay, so you see for an open source model, real nice. So let's have a look. If you want to see the prices here for input token price and output token price, these are the costs here as I record this video. So I correct and say, hey, building has only 50 floors. You have to stay within the interval of 0 to 50. Q and 3 next, ADB, A3B goes off and says, okay, let's calculate this again. This is fantastic. As you see, again, accelerated here 200% here on the Q1 platform itself. It's trying to find here another solution, but it is not that easy because I have symmetries and anti-symmetries. I have anti-time, I have mirror behavior here. So the complexity is real complex for a 3B model, just to be absolutely clear here. But you see, it is powerful. It's not giving up. It's powering through. It wants to find here a solution. And this goes on now for quite some time. And as you see, this is still the reasoning process. This reasoning process here takes also quite some time. But after four minutes of reasoning, the system came back to me and told me, hey, I found a solution. Look at this. And I thought, that's great. So Pareto Optimal, everything is great. Nine button presses. But just looking at a solution, I know there is a mistake. Now, of course, you find this here at Open Router. They have it here for you. Please note, this is the non-syncing model, but they say, hey, it is great for ultra-long inputs and multi-turn dialogue, making it well-suited for REC, Retrieval Augmented Generation, tool use, and agentic workflows. Beautiful. Of course, it's on hugging phase. Here you have it. It is here in BF16. Great. You have two providers. You can test it out immediately. And we have Apache 2 license. So... Great. If you want to have here the detailed features, we have here gated attention, gated delta net, mixture of expert here, everything with context length. Great. If you want to have it here a little bit more in detail, 
information is available for you on the Q1 block and even Hugging Face has some detail. What is new in this model? Now I tell it, hey, just verify yourself. So the system goes off and tries now to verify this. As you will see, it immediately discovers, hey, there was a mistake. This is not a correct solution. So without coming back and asking me, hey, should I optimize myself? It just starts to optimize itself. It understood. Wrong solution. I have to perform better. So it's now into a deep, deep reasoning process. Our little 3 billion model here. And after 10 minutes of intense thinking, it came back to me and said, hey, I have found a solution. So here's it. Everything here, according to my instruction, it's still syncing here, even in the output process and says, okay, wait a minute. No, I can do this and this. No, I found it. No solution with less than 10 button presses exist. The solution is provable optimal, which is not correct, but never mind. Yes, it found the emergency exit. This is great. It found the ABC, ABC sequence. It's within the limits. And I think this could be it. And of course, the code is available for you here. Simple code snippet on Hugging Face. How to use the model here. So you see simple model name. This is it. Everything is available for you. And if you want to go with MCP and tool use, great. It has been trained for this particular thing. Code is available on Hugging Face for you. So I say, now validate this. Yeah, you're on the right track. Just validate it. So, and it says, goes there and says, a hey, critical problem. I found a critical problem. It was so, so close. It says, okay, there's a mistake. No, the solution is not what I found. So again, it goes and tries to find a solution. Real, great, brave little 3 billion model. But for the complexity that I have here in my causal reasoning test, you see the brain is not big enough. It is trying to separate the complexity into tiny, tiny little pieces, trying to solve each tiny little piece and then put it together, concatenate it together, and it fails. And after eight minutes of deep, deep thinking, it comes back with a solution and it wants to show me that it found something. But look at this. 10 steps with an emergency exit. This would be great. But look, it found another uh, red cross. No, error. So it tries again to come up with a solution. Yes, emergency exit, another error. It says, hey, wait a minute, I corrected. Let's do this again. Emergency exit, yes, F9. This is great. Another error. Hey, let me correct this again. And you see what's happening. Our little 3 beam model. Eh? And then we have here now a solution here. Final constraint, critical error, another error. And it's fighting. It is fighting. But it, the brain is too small for the complexity, you see? So it is, it's, no, it's close. And it's trying to find a solution, if I would say this is a human being. But, okay. So it said, listen, this is the only valid solution. 10 button presses. But you know, there's a problem. There's a problem. Have a look. This states here, this is invalid. So if you have a typo, Otherwise, no valid solution exists. So, therefore, the result of this test is, if we go here with a mixture of expert 80 billion with an active only 3 billion part, and we just look at the pure thinking time, I spend about half an hour, I don't know how many tokens, just on pure thinking. But the result were rather, well, so the first run for nine minutes, it found a solution. Unfortunately, it decoupled here the real physics of the world, the world model, from a mathematical model where it just say model of 50. So this was not a real world solution. Then I said, hey, listen, the building only has 50 floors, so you cannot go to floor 63. And I said, okay. And after four minutes, the system came back and told me, hey, I found another solution. Now, unfortunately, I saw, because I used this test now for more than a year, that this was not a valid solution. So I said, it, hey, just do a verification run. I told it, not, not is it good or bad? Just verify yourself. And after 10 minutes thinking, it came back and said, hey, my solution was wrong. But you know what? I found a new solution. And I saw this was a real good solution. This was a real close solution. For a 3 billion model, absolutely beautiful. But then it happened. It went again for 8 minutes trying to verify this here. And yeah, it went into whatever it was. And you clearly saw, if you looked at this in real time, 
It was trying so hard to come up with the right solution, but 3 billion free trainable parameter in the current configuration was not a big enough brain to solve my complexity level on my causal reasoning test. If you have simpler problems, I think it could be a real excellent model, an open source model, but for real difficult causal reasoning, it failed. So it found a solution, but it was a wrong solution. And if you look at the final result here, the last screen, you know, I told it, yeah, I found something. But this is only valid if the token instruction that you've given me in your instruction is valid. If there is a typo in the instruction, if the emergency exit costs much less, then under this modified condition, I think I found a sequence that is valid. Otherwise, the Q13 next ADB active 3B tells us otherwise no valid solution exists. Now, we both know, well, of course, a solution exists and GPT-5 had no problem or Gemini 2.5 Pro or Grok 4 found solution, but this little 3B had no chance, although it was real damn close to find the solution. So there you have it, my personal test, my experience, for a real complex reasoning test, I think for a medium complexity, this could be a real interesting reasoning model, open source. Give it a try. Please share your experience that you have with the model in the comments. And I see you in my next video.